Hello, songwriters. So a lot of you have been asking about co-writing. Today, we're going to tackle that subject, and I'm going to answer all your questions. So, number one, what should I look for when I'm looking for a co-writer? You're going to be spending quite a few hours in a room with another person, maybe even two, which is my preferable co-write is three people. And I would say you want to find somebody who's going to complete you. If you're a top liner, which is someone who does lyrics and melody, which is what I am, I need somebody who is going to be a really great musician. That would complete me. So it's knowing yourself so well in what you're really good at and what you need. That's the first thing. And second thing is, is this somebody you'd want to hang out with all day? It's really important that you, you have that chemistry with somebody because this is somebody you're going to be spending a lot of time with sharing your intimate stories with. All right, number two, how do you find co-writers? Well, network. It's through your network of other writers, other producers, publishers, your ASCAP or BMI rep. Through all those people, I would start asking if they know anybody. And then, you know, you could go to some open mics or some songwriter showcases and approach people yourself to see who would be interested. Number three, how can I best prepare for a co-write? Well, I've heard a lot of answers on this one. I had a writer who went in with a book of titles and that's where they'd start. I had a writer who kept lines, like just lists of great lines that she liked and would, that would spur her on for a story. I had another writer who said she never prepared. She would just show up and met herself exactly where she was. So what is your creative process? Do you need to be very, very prepared or not at all? I actually like to be somewhere in the middle. I do have a journal of lines that I love and some titles and so forth. And depending on who's in the room, well, it might... It might spur something on, the song might come quickly, or it might spur on a great conversation with another girlfriend or another guy that you just couldn't have anywhere else. To me, those are the best songs when you just get into the thick of the, the subject of what you're talking about. Okay, what do I do if I don't like a song I co-wrote and my co-writer wants to release it? Well, that's a, that's a precarious situation. Um, what I would say is, is that if you don't absolutely, absolutely hate it and think it would ruin your whole career if somebody ever heard this song, I would say go ahead and let them release it. Because you know what? They really like it. They want to release it. Who knows? There have been a lot of songs I pitched that I thought, really, they're taking that song? And it became a huge song. Sometimes you just never know. Now, if you really want to, you know, hedge your bet a little bit, you could always use a synonym for your name, all right? Um, and you don't have to put it on your list of, here are all my cuts. You don't have to advertise it. But I, like I said, I wouldn't stop it. So what are some tips for communicating and smoothing over differences with co-writers? What I have found is that when someone has a difference of opinion, they really want to be heard. And so that's the first thing that I do, is that I hear them out. I hear what they want to say, or I make sure that they hear what I need to say. And then giving options is a really good idea. So if you don't like a chorus, instead of saying, I just don't like that chorus, we should do something else, it's, I'm not sure I'm crazy about it. I wonder if we added a line. Giving some options so that then you can stand back and let the others in the room also ponder if that would make it better. You've given an idea and you've given then the room for that idea to flourish, to bloom, to see if it's anything. And if it's not, you always got the original chorus to go back to. Hear somebody out as you would want them to hear you out. What do I do if I'm in a co-write I hate? I would say if you hate it, then don't do it again. I mean, if it's really, really bad, you can always, you know, saying a little, I'm not feeling well, or, oops, I just got a text and I got to run. Um, I would, of course, stick the amount loud of time, the three hours or so, that, and I would never go over three hours for a first write. It's kind of like a date. 
You know, if you're going to go on a first date, you always meet somebody for a drink or coffee. You never, you never commit to the whole night. Um, same thing with the co-write. So you can, you can assess what's going on. Sometimes walking away from a co-write is just as powerful as staying and fighting for it. Can a song I co-wrote be released by both myself and my co-writer as artists? Sure. As long as you guys communicate with each other of what, what you're doing, you can do whatever you want. Just communicate with each other. People always talk about co-writing, but I like writing alone. Why should I co-write? For those of you who can do it by yourself, fantastic. So why would you need a co-write? First of all, I think having company in the room. Having somebody that you can bounce ideas off of. Someone who can bring something to the party that maybe you didn't think of. You know the old adage that, you know, it's better to play tennis with somebody who's better than you so you can always be learning. I also think it's great to know that you can do it by yourself and you can co-write. You have that skill. To be able to do both well, that's a talent. How can I make split agreements simple with co-writers? By starting your co-write with an intention. When you meet somebody new and you talk about your creative process, well, I like to work, write lyrics and you like to write music, how fabulous, we're a great pair, and how do, you, how do you handle splits? This is how I handle splits. I like to go into a co-write at the very beginning. If there's two of us, then we split it evenly. If there's three of us, we'll split it evenly. And then at the end of the co-write, you review the song again to make sure you're still on the same page. Is it a third, a third, a third, or did I do a little more and I deserved maybe 40% and you two are going to split the, the 30 and 30 and I get 40. That's the time to discuss it. Also, it's the time to have your split sheet there. If you don't have a split sheet agreement, go onto my website to the for alumni section only and there's a digital download. It's a piece of paper that has all the information of the song. It has your name, your co-writer's name, publishing company name, address, the splits. It has a place for you to sign so you each agree. So you have a piece of paper that says all of this. So when that co-writer leaves, there's not gonna be selective memory two years down the line when someone wants to cut the song. It's all right there. So if somebody wants to license it or cut it, you got it all, your, your T's crossed and your I's dotted. Now, what do I do if I think a split agreement is unfair? Will you be open and honest and respectful with your co-writer about it? I would go to my co-writer and say, we need to talk about the splits. I know that you think that it should be 50-50. I really do believe that it should be 60-40, and let me tell you why. And I would state my case, and then I would say to the person, to my co-writer, how do you feel about this? I would give them the space for their, for their words, for their response. And that way, then you can talk about it. All right. Are there any specific workshops you recommend to find co-writers? Well, yes, there is. One in particular. The Judy Stakey, it all starts with the song, Songwriting Retreat. It's a retreat where you go away for five days and you bond with 21 other writers. You co-write, you perform, you learn, and you come away belonging to a Facebook alumni group where you have other writers that you have access to that are open-minded and want the best for each other. Besides that, you could go to the Ask Gap Expo and network with all those people there or go to an open mic. Oh, with some great writers starting out that would love some more co-writers. So here's our last question. Do you have a great co-writing tip that you'd like to share? If you're not having fun writing the song, then skip it. I have a great story. I had a, a couple of writers in the other day who told me that the, when they started their co-write, it was just like pulling teeth. They, they started something and you know, they hit a wall and they tried again and they hit a wall and they finally just went done. You know what? This is not going anywhere. And someone said something and they went, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. That, that's, that's hysterical. Come here. Come, let's write that down. And within a half an hour, they had written the song and they brought it in and I listened to it and I went, wow, I really like this guy's, you know, from everything else I've heard. I really like this one. They went, 
you're kidding. That took us half an hour and we had so much fun doing it. I said, well, there's your litmus test right there. You had fun doing it. Let's keep that as the barometer of why you're doing this in the first place. Well, that's it for co-writing. Thanks so much for tuning in. And if you're interested in more songwriting tips and tricks, you can follow me, Judy Stakey, on all social media platforms. And if you're interested in working together, check out judystakey.com for my one-on-one -on -one consultations and for my week-long songwriting retreats. Well, that's it. Keep practicing, keep learning, and have a wonderful day.